So lately I've been posting these particle frames on Instagram. So today I'm going to show you how to use the native emitter in cinema to create all kind of particle systems. So this technique is based on the volume builder and the force field. And we all know that the volume builder can be used to create some amazing geometry, but it can also be used to create vector data. And this vector data can be fed into a field force. And then you have the perfect recipe to create some crazy particle setups. So you can almost use everything to put it inside of the volume builder and then use it to displace the particles. So this is the theory, but how do we actually use it in practice? Well, I'm gonna show you now. All right, so I'm gonna show you two techniques, one using a volume builder and one using only the field force. So the first one we're gonna start off with is the volume builder. So let's create an emitter here and let's create a volume builder. Let's create a random field and put that inside of the volume builder. Then go into the volume builder and set it to vector so we can extract all the vector data we need. Let's now go and get a field force. So here's the field force. Let's drop the volume builder inside of the field force, select volume object and set the velocity type to change direction. Okay, that's all good. So let's go inside of the volume builder. Let's go down to these filter layers. Let's select the last one, which is vector curl. So now we are actually getting a curl noise, but it's a bit hard to see because the vector strains are, because the vector display is so dense. So first of all, we're just gonna go to the random field, set it to a thousand in scale. And as you can see, it's more defined now. Then we can go into a volume builder again, select the random field in the volume builder and set the box size up to a thousand. All right, that's good. So now we just want to hide the volume builder so we can see what we're doing. And let's try and press play. So as you can see, the particles are following the curl noise, but the effect doesn't look that great yet. So let's pause this play and let's select the emitter, go and find a tracer. So the tracer should be in the trace link. If it isn't, then just drag it in. And let's go to the emitter, set the count in both editor and render up to a thousand and let's press play and see. So as you can see, we're getting these nice curls, but the effect isn't done yet because we can take it a step further. As you can see, it's not really that smooth. They are really jagged, these lines, and we don't want that. So I actually also think they are a bit too small, the curls. So I'm going to go into my random field and set it up to 2000 in scale. And then I'm gonna go to my emitter, set it to 100 in speed, and then go to my volume builder. So in the volume builder, you can see there's a voxel size, and the voxel size actually controls how jagged these edges are. So if we just set it to five and then play it again, we can see we get jagged edges, but they are more subdivided now. So one more thing we could do to make it less jagged is go into the tracer, set it from linear to cubic and set it to adaptive. All right, so now they are not that jagged, they're more curved. And this is the effect. So as you can see, this is a cool effect and you can get some really nice results. And it's also procedural. So you can also just go into your random field and just 
take a new seat, and then you get a whole nother result. And this one kind of looks more cool. So this is the first technique. And now let me show you how the technique without the volume builder works. So like last time, we're going to create an emitter. And this time we're not going to create a volume builder. We're just going to create a field force. And in our field force, we can change the velocity type to change direction. So what do we put into this field force? Well, we can actually just put a render field inside of it and it will work the same as the last one without the curl effect. But we can also just put some other fields and even put splines into it. So let me create a seesawed, I think it's called, and let me choose the laminiscate option. All right, so now we have like this infinity symbol. So let's select the field force and put this inside of the field force. And in the field force, we can go to display and set it to 500 times 500. So now we can just make the density a little bit bigger. And yeah, I think that's it. As you can see, the particles are following this spline. So let me just make the timeline a bit longer. And it's really cool because they're just going to travel along and stay on this spline. So let's make some more particles because we all love more particles. And I'm going to make a thousand like last time. And look at this. It's amazing what you can do with the native cinema emitter. So the thing to keep in mind here is that if you have the emitter offset to your spline then the particles are going to do some weird shit so <laughs> just keep that in mind so for this one it's easier if we just make it a scale of 10 and then press the reset psr button so this is more like it and now we got this crazy loop so let's make it more interesting by making a turbulence and in the turbulence we're going to set it to 25 and 25 so as you can see it's trying to follow the spline but also trying to follow the turbulence so it's making this really weird but really cool particle system so let's put a tracer on it and see what it does let me just set my timeline to 400 so I don't crash my computer. And let's go and set a tracer on it. All right, so you can see the tracer. It makes some nice lines and then it just, yeah, just goes around and around. And if we wanted to, we can even make it more crazy by making this strength to 250 and making the scale to 250. So now you can see it's really crazy and it's following the spline, but it's also doing all of these, all of these weird loops in the turbulence. Let me just turn off the display in my field force so you can actually see what's going on. And this is so crazy. I love it. So you're probably saying to yourself, but Lucas, how do you render this? So let me just jump into the other scene. So back in this scene, to create the material and, and get all these strands to show up in the render, we can create a redshift tag, a redshift object tag on the tracer. Then we get this curves menu and you only get this curves menu when you place the object tag on a spline or a spline mograph. So that could be a tracer or a hair object. So in the curves menu, we have the option to select hair strains and we are gonna select hair strains. All right, so let me just bring up my Redshift render view. And as you can see, 
we have these hair strands. And they are a bit too thick right now. So let's make it 0.1. That's much better. And we can even make the tip a bit smaller. Like this. So they really look like hair. So let me just find a good moment in this animation. And then I'll come back and show you how to put some materials on it. All right, so I found a good moment here. <laughs> There's a lot of things going on, but we can frame it up. So let's go and create a standard redshift material. And in the redshift material, you can search for a hair random color under utilities. So let's plug this into our diffuse. Let's put the material on our tracer. And let's change the color to something less ugly than a red color. So let's change to a blue color. So let's change the hue amount. So these sliders down here control how much randomization you're going to get in the hue, saturation, and the value. So if I crank the value up and crank the hue amount up, you can see we get some dark ones and some light ones and we can even crank this up and get more variation so if we crank this bit down crank this we don't want the hue to be a big factor in this we just want it to be a, a bluish vibe and we can just put this value to a high number let's say seven and let's put some more saturation on it and here you have it so as you can see some are white and some are blue and if we take this and put it into the overall emission color and we go here and select the emission weight drag it up you can see we get some nice exposure on this so let me just go and find one of my HDRIs so we can light this. And if you want to get these HDRIs, there is a link in the description. So please go and check them out. I think they're really good. So as you can see, we got some nice hair strands here and we just need to frame it up. Let's hide the background on this. And there you have it, guys. So as you can see, you can build some amazing particle systems in cinema with the native emitter. And I'm really looking forward to see what you guys will create with this new technique. And until next time, stay rendering.